Hi, my name is Eloy Garcia, and I will present a paper model based on trail control over lossy networks, written in collaboration with Professor Panos and Sacklis. This work considers the stabilization problem of uncertain systems connected to an imperfect communication channel, which is subject to packet dropouts. <clears throat> at a sensor node, we implement a sensor model and a event trigger mechanism, ATM. At the controller node, we implement a controller model and the controller itself. Notice that the sensor model is updated every time instance, uh, TI. However, the controller model is updated only at the receiving time instance, only when a message is not lost and is received at the controller node. The receiving instance are denoted by TI star. The state of a sensor model is used to evaluate the trigger in events, and the state of a controller model is used to compute the control input. We consider the more general case where ACK messages are not implemented since, since they can also be subject to packet losses. This is a difficult situation to analyze in a venture control since consistency of state error at different node locations is not obtained. It's easy to see that the states of the sensor model and the controller model are only consistent or equal to each other for specific time intervals when a measurement is uh, not lost and is received by a controller node. We also highlight that the absence of updates in the venture control does not provide any useful information at the controller node. It is not known at the controller node whether an update was transmitted and lost or an update has not transmitted at all. We implement the following event trigger function, which is based on the state error evaluated at sensor node. By implementing this ETM, we can easily bound the sensor state error uh, ES. Now, the main problem is that we don't know how the controller error behaves, since we don't know the exact time instance when the controller gets a failure. Since the state of the controller model is, is the one being used to control the system, it is very important to establish a bound on the state error EC. Such is one of the main results of the paper, where an upper bound is obtained, which is a function of the ETM parameters and the man's value n minus one. The second main result follows from this one and establishes asymptotical stability of the uncertain network system. In addition, we are able to exclude signal behavior and we show that there exists a positive minimum intervent bound for the transmission time intervals. Finally, we show an example. We consider the model of the vehicle for lane following control, which is given by the first expression on this slide. The same control law is given by the second expression, where psi and ye can be used for event trigger uh, feedback. The values for different lowercase a's and b's in the state equation are uncertain and depend on the physical properties of the vehicle. The open loop system is unstable and, and the aim is to stabilize it. That is, to converge to a lane and stay on it, using event trigger feedback updates, which are subject to packet loss. The state of the system in both models are shown in the figure. It can be seen that because of packet dropouts, the state of a model at the controller node is updated less frequently than the state of a model at the sensor node. The bottom plot shows that most of the transmitted packets are lost and they do not arrive at the controller node. Overall, the system is stabilized using event trigger control in the presence of packet dropouts and without using ACK. Hello, everyone. Welcome to my presentation. My name is Zipeng Huang, and I am a graduate student at Dalhousie University, Canada. My presentation topic is formation control with dynamic non-autonomous leader using sampled data eventual communication. We consider a group of n identical linear flow agents and one linear leader with dynamics given by equation 1. We assume that leader's control input is independent from all other agents and it can be bounded by a known positive constant. The control objective is then to develop a distributed controller such that the formation errors are bounded by a constant positive number for all followers. We propose a controller that depends on only locally computable information, where mu i is the formation compensation input, x i hat and x j hat are the estimated states following the dynamics shown here. K is the controller gain design uh, to be determined. In the event generator design, we first propose a combined formation error signal in equation 3. A quadratic triggering function can then be designed as equation 4, where psi and phi are two positive definite matrices to be designed. And the triggering rule is then designed as shown in equation 5, and under this triggering rule, the triggering function will remain negative semi-definite for all agents at all sampling instance. The following theorem gives the sufficient conditions for the controller and the event generator gain design. Basically, the controller and the event generator gain design problem is formulated as a feasibility problem of the LMI6. 
To demonstrate the developed algorithm using simulations, we consider a group of linearized unicycle type mobile robots and the formation controller designed using theorem 1. The figure here shows the time evolution of a five agent group with communication topology showing here. It clearly shows that the whole group is able to converge to the desired group formation after five seconds. Snapshots of the group formation at t equal to 0 second, 2 second, 5 second, and 10 second are given in this figure, where the red dashed lines represent the desired group formation and the black dashed lines represent the actual group formation. Communication instances in each follower agent are demonstrated here, which shows the communication events are relatively sparsely distributed as the system approaches to the desired formation. Thank you. Hi, welcome to my presentation. The topic of my presentation is observer-based leader-follower bipartite consensus with intermittent failures in the communication channel using Lapinov functions and time scale theory. I am Shubham and I am affiliated with the LAMI lab of University Polytechnic Hot de France and the Racing lab of University of La Aquila. This is a work which is jointly done with Fatima Zora Tawseh, Mohamed Jamai, Michael Defort and Stefano Di Gennaro. Now why time scale theory or major chain theory? The famous mathematician Eric Temple Bell gave the following statement which you see in the slide in the previous century. Thus, time scale theory allows us to perform calculus not only on continuous and discrete time domain but on any non-uniform time domain. It was proposed by Stephen Hilger in his PhD thesis whom you see on the right hand side of the slide. In this slide, I show some of the prominent time scales which uh, exist in the literature. On the top, we have a PAB time scale. This is a discrete time scale. This is a continuous time scale, and some other time scales which are combinations of continuous and discrete time scale. Here we have the definitions of forward jump operator, backward jump operator, greenness function, and backward greenness function. Here uh, we have the def definition of delta differentiation. We also have the definition of Hilger circle, which is used to define the Hilger stability criteria, which is given by equation six when mu t not equals to zero. When mu t equals to 1, we can see the stability condition coincides with that of discrete time stability criteria. By equation 7, we define the Lapinov function on time scales. Here in this slide, I show the graph topology which we have used in our paper. 0 is the leader, 1, 2, 3, 4 are the follower agents. Uh, the solid lines represent cooperative interaction, the dashed line represents antagonistic interaction. Thus, in the paper, a uh, distributed observer protocol is given. It solves the leader-follower bipartite consensus. When there exists intermittent failures, then the problem of consensus is converted to an equivalent switch system formulation on an appropriate time scale. The time scale considered is given in equation 8. In the paper, we also have a theorem from which the stability of the switch system is proved as well as the values of gain constant k and k0 of the distributed observer are calculated. Thus, in this slide, from the plots of bipartite error and the observer error, one can easily see that our design procedure works successfully. These are some of the references and I welcome you to visit my poster. Thank you for watching this video. My name is Luis Tavares. I am from the University of Guadalajara. The work I am presenting is Does the Space Consensus of Heterogeneous Robots with Time Delays and Without Velocity Measurements, done in collaboration with Carlos Aldana, Emmanuel Nuño, and Emmanuel Cruz. In this work, we solve the consensus problem without a leader in the robot's task space for networks composed of robots kinetically and dynamically different as the one shown in this figure. We are considering the following two aspects. The first one is that the velocity measurements, linear and angular, are not available. And the second one is that the communication channel exhibits variable time delays. The proposed control out cancels out the gravity and injects damping through a virtual dynamic controller. X is the robot's pose and Y is the virtual controller's pose, defined in the following way and obtaining from the next differential equation. Using Barbara's lemma and 
satisfying this stability condition we can prove that the pause errors and the velocity of the robots converge to zero we present a numerical simulation to illustrate the controller's performance using a robot network composed of five robots as the one shown in this figure whose Laplacian matrix is this with the variable tendle S shown in figure B the simulation was carried out using MATLAB and Simulink and some libraries developed in C++ and a Simulink library developed by the research group named Liromas. We obtained the following simulation results. In this figure is shown the pause evolution. It can be observed in the figure 8 that the Cartesian position of the robots converts to a common one after the second 20. For the case of the unit quaternions used to represent the robot's orientation, Shown in figure B, we can observe that around the second 25, all unit quaternions converge to a common value. The linear and angular velocity behavior is shown in these figures, and we can observe that all of them converge to zero as we expected. As conclusion, we can remark the following. We have formally solved a task consensus problem for heterogeneous robots without velocity measurements. The proposed control out guarantees convergence to a common pose and velocities to zero when the variable tendulates in the communication channel, and the unit quaternions are used to represent the robot's orientation. It is a singularity free orientation representation. We are currently testing our controller in a real heterogeneous robot networks, and as future work, we will solve this consensus problem for the leader follower case. My name is Luis Tavares. Thank you for watching this video. Hello everyone, my name is John Belfu and I'm going to present the paper named Distributed Inverse Optimal Control for Discrete Time Nonlinear Multi-Agent Systems. This presentation is going to be divided in these five different parts. Let's start with uh, the introduction. We start by considering a multi-agent system in which the state of each agent is given by equation one. The state of agent I depends on the states and manipulative variables of its neighbors that are known and the states of the rest of the agent in a network through the function f y bar that is unknown and thus constitutes the perturbation that is assumed to be bounded. The goal then is to optimize a global cost j that can be written as the sum of local cost function j i. The local optimization problems are defined in the equation five. The first step to define our controller is to define this v function and then the HEB equation can be written for which the optimal control law is given by equation eight that depends on this generic function V. The function V must be such that there are two, these two conditions are satisfied, in particular, this inequality equation nine. The second step is to define the coordination method that here is assumed to be this non-cooperative game. In this game, each agent solves its local optimization problem and exchanges the solution with its neighbors until a consensus is reached. The first contribution of the paper is theorem one that states conditions for which the proposed game converges based on small game conditions, as we can see here in equation 11. The second contribution is theorem two that states that if we consider a generic V that satisfy the conditions in definition one, then the overall system is input to state stable with respect to the perturbation FY bar. Applying this theory to a couple pendulum system defined in this slide, in which pendulum one is perturbed by pendulum three and vice versa, it is possible to see that the objective of tracking a reference for each pendulum was fulfilled with the robust inverse optimal control obtained. To conclude, a distributed suboptimal control controller is proposed. The control algorithms combines robust inverse optimal control with non-cooperative game, and the resulting controller controlled system is input to state stable and is robust with respect to unknown disturbances that may depend on the state. Thank you very much. 
Hello, everyone. I'm Wei Ren, a postdoc at UC Leuven. This is a work collaborating with my previous colleague Tao Yu and my previous supervisor, Professor Jin Xiong. Here, we focus on stability and age infilling performance of lead worked and quantized control systems. As is long to all, control overload work offers numerous benefits in terms of reduced cost, weight, and value and ease of maintenance and installation. Meanwhile, the communication channel induces undesirable issues like time varying sampling, time delays, time scheduling, quantization, and packet dropouts. These network induced issues complicate analysis and design and adversely affect the behavior of network control systems. In particular, this issue usually possess random problems. Thus, our goal is to deal with these issues to guarantee both stability and age infilling inf performance. We consider linear plant and controller and all network induced issues are addressed. Among them, packet dropouts are random and confront the ballooning distribution. Both transmission interval and transmission delay are identically and independently distributed and identify the distribution condition. Our approach consists of three steps. First, we apply the discrete time modeling approach to construct the discrete time model. Second, to investigate random variables decapitally, the discrete time model is over approximated via a polytopic system. That is, the performance guarantee of the polytopic system implies the performance guarantee of the discrete time system. Third, we consider two time scheduling protocols and derive the LMI conditions to issue stability and age infilling performance. The derived conditions result in less conservative trade off between the mighty and the mad. Finally, we illustrate our results via a benchmark example. Given the plant and the controller, we assume the latter work with two nodes and different packet dropout rates. The time scheduling protocol is try once discard protocol. The, both the transmission interval and the transmission delay are bounded and random. The probability is presented via marginal probability density function. By using the proposed approach, we obtain the trade-off between the mighty and the mad to guarantee the system stability and h infilling performance on the different h infilling attenuation level, gamma 2. Thank you. Autonomous agents use relative measurements to accomplish geometric formations in a decentralized approach. If the closed-loop relative dynamics are asymptotically or exponentially stable, then the agents will arrive at the respective location in space starting from an initial condition. But closed-loop dynamic stability alone is not enough. During many dynamic situations, such as during reconfiguration or external disturbances, inner agent collisions can occur in dynamically stable multi-agent systems. As we inject a slight stochastic disturbance uh, in this video, you see that in the serial chain formation, inner agent collisions occur, even though the formation is exponentially stable. We call this phenomenon transient instability. This paper introduces the control algorithm and the associated theoretical results to mitigate transient instability while maintaining the overall asymptotic stability. So how did we accomplish this? Notice that each agent consists of a baseline controller that is used to accomplish position maintenance. To this, we first added interagent communication. Second, we augmented the baseline controller with a projection operator based estimator that generates collision free trajectories. We also added a tracking controller to track the collision free trajectories generated by the projection based estimator. This paper shows that the estimator tracker, together with the interagent communication, effectively mitigates transient instabilities in formations with arbitrary interactions. Next, let's see an illustrative example. Here, a nine agent formation is undergoing a reconfiguration event. Notice that with the baseline controller, collisions occur. If you augment the baseline controller with our proposed control methodology, you see that the transients are very well behaved. We also see here that we have successfully prevented inner agent collisions.
For all the juicy theoretical details, please refer to our ACC paper. This work wouldn't have been made possible without the help and the constant encouragement of this incredible team. I'm grateful. I'm Vinod Gelot, and if you'd like to reach out to me regarding any technical details or anything else, please feel free to contact me using my email address vinodgelot at tamu.edu. Thank you. Welcome to my talk on enhancing model-based network control of uncertain process systems through error-triggered parameter re-identification. In traditional feedback control architectures, like the one in the figure on the left here, the interface between the controller and the process is through dedicated feedback controller links. Recently, however, there has been a shift towards networked feedback control architectures, where the interface between the process and the controller has become more complex. The integration of networked feedback control has brought upon many opportunities and has enabled smart play operations. However, it does come with a challenge that has to be addressed. Now that there's a shared communication network, it is desirable to reduce network resource utilization, and to do that, minimal communication is required. On the other hand, optimal control performance requires frequent communication. Model-based control is one approach to address this challenge. Model-based control aims to achieve closed-loop stability with minimal communication, and it does so by embedding models of the process in the controller, and the models are used to generate estimates of the states when communication is suspended, and when communication is reestablished, the states are updated through the local network. With this approach, however, the extent of network resource utilization savings is hindered by a number of open issues such as fixed model parameters, uh, which can uh, deteriorate performance or increase network utilization. In addition to that, this approach does not address limited state measurements. Motivated by these considerations, we present in this work an approach for augmenting time-triggered model-based output feedback control with event-triggered online parameter re-identification for process systems subject to limited output measurements, process parameter variations, and sensor controller communication constraints. A stabilizing feedback controller is designed and it takes the following form, where K is a feedback game. The model equations that are embedded in the controller take the following form, where X hat is the model states. In order to estimate the unmeasured states, a Leuenberger observer of the following form is designed, and when model state updates occur, the model states are updated with the observer states. The following flowchart summarizes the proposed methodology. After initialization, we continuously monitor the system for possible destabilizing drifts. If an alarm is triggered, then a safe parking protocol takes place in which the system is temporarily stabilized to collect data for identification. The data collected is, set, is checked for sufficient excitations, and when new model parameters are re-identified, they are checked for stability before model parameters are updated. In this study, we consider a CSTR with an irreversible elementary reaction. The process dynamics of the system can be described by the following equations. The control objective is to stabilize the system at the open loop unstable steady state with minimal network utilization. After performing a stability analysis, the system is initially run with a stabilizing update period. This can be seen in the state profiles on the left over here. After some time, a drift is introduced and the state starts to diverge. Safe parking protocol takes place and the system is stabilized while data is collected. And then re-identification takes place and the update period is then increased again and the system remains stable throughout the rest of the operation. The figure on the right shows the maximum eigenvalue magnitudes from the stability analysis for all three cases. Thank you for your time. Hi, my name is Shima Sadat Musavi and I'm from ETH Zurich. In this work, we focused on the controllability analysis of Laplacian networks with oriented threshold graphs or OTGs. Network controllability and observability arise in situations where a network is influenced or observed by an external entity. In a larger scale network, it is practically impossible to control all the nodes. So we aim to find some key nodes which can be directly controlled and render the whole network controllable. There are some classical controllability tests to check the controllability of an LTI system. However, using them result in numerical infeasibilities in larger scale networks. Thus, we aim to infer the network controllability from the graph topology. Controllability analysis of Laplacian networks has gained a lot of attention because of their applications in many control scenarios. Laplacian controllability of undirected graphs like path, cycle, and threshold graphs has been studied in the literature, but the controllability of directed networks is more complicated. In this work, we extend the existing results to study the controllability of directed threshold graphs. The problems that are generally MP-hard can be solved efficiently on OTGs. 
They can also be used in the analysis of serious parallel networks like electrical systems. Let's consider two graphs, G1 and G2. Their union includes the union of their nodes and edges. Their order composition includes also all the edges from every node of G1 to any node of G2. Now let's start with a single node and recursively add a single node to the former graph through the union or order composition. Then an LTG is constructed. In this work, we consider an LTI network defined over an LTG. X is the aggregated vector of states of nodes. A is the minus of the integrate Laplacian of an OTG. We consider two cases for the input matrix B. In the first case, B is terminal and every input signal is injected into only one node called the control node. In the second case, B is a binary matrix. We first derive the spectrum and the modal matrix associated with an OTG. Then we establish graph theoretic conditions for controllability of an LTI system and an OTG with respectively a terminal and a binary input matrix B. Thanks for your attention. Hi everyone, this is Arman and my last name is Sargul Zai. I'm an assistant professor at mechanical engineering department of Tennessee Technological University. So in this specific paper, uh, we focus on false data injection attack and we focus on nonlinear systems. We combine model-based and learning-based algorithm in order to uh, tackle this issue. We design a neural network uh, uh, and updated laws for neural network are designed based on Lyapun of stability analysis. So as you can see on the figure, we consider a centralized network control system with the star topology. Measurement signals are under FDI attacks and measurement noise, and also we consider uh, disturbances. Our objectives are to design a secure controller. And uh, in order to do that, we need to have measurement signals, but in or because FDI attacks are injected to measurement signals, they are not, they are faulty or they are not measurable. So in order to tackle this issues, issue, we design a nonlinear observer. And in order to do that and quantify the error, we design or develop these uh, error signals. The centralized controller is designed based on our control, our uh, stability analysis. We develop a measurement feedback signal, which uses the received faulty measurement signals and estimated FDI attacks. A state estimator is designed based on our stability analysis, which uses both learning and model-based techniques. The FDI attack is also estimated using uh, a neural network while its parameters are updated based on our stability analysis. The design controller state estimator and FDI attack compensator ensure semi-global uniformly ultimately bounded tracking if we satisfy the sufficient conditions by selecting appropriate controller and observer gains. So for the simulation, a centralized network control system with two link planner manipulator is selected. We injected FDI attacks to the agents and figure shows the position errors and angle of velocity errors for the first and second robots under FDI attacks. We compare our results uh, with traditional controller which shows a better trajectory tracking under FDI attacks. So if you have any more questions, you can email me or you can check our website, which is ranks-lab.com. And thank you for your time and have a great day. Good morning, everyone. I am Anastasia Impicciatore and I will present optimal output feedback control and separation principle for Markov jump linear systems, modern wireless network control scenarios, realized with Yuri Zakialun, Pier Domenico Pepe and Alessandro Nino Cianzo. First of all, we consider wireless network control scenario under TCP-like protocols where a plant sends its measurements via sensing link to the controller, which sends its control packets via actuation link to the actuators. The considered links may suffer from packet losses that we model via uh, binary random variables. Packet losses depend on the state of the considered links, and uh, uh, we refer to the state of the links uh, as modes uh, of the system that evolve according to Markov chains uh, models. 
Uh, I like to point out that uh, the output feedback controller is aware of the modes and of uh, packet losses occurrence on the links. But as far as a question link is concerned, this information is affected by one time step delay. Uh, we model the overall system using the discrete time Markov jump model. And uh, our goal is uh, to design a discrete time Markov jump observer with an optimal mode dependent uh, control gain, accounting for a, a one time step delay in the actuation link mode observation. This is uh, the main difference uh, with respect to the previous literature. And of course, we aim uh, to obtain an optimal mode dependent filtering gain. Uh, so that we can develop a separation principle. Uh, as uh, main results uh, achieved, uh, we uh, present uh, the uh, optimal uh, control problem solution and the optimal uh, filtering problem uh, solution that are obtained uh, independently. Uh, the two problems admit a unique stabilizing solution if the system is uh, uh, stabilizable with respect to the actuation link and detectable with respect to the sensing link. And finally, each solution can be computed via a couple of recut equations using LMI's approach. We validate our results uh, using uh, um, as a case study, the inverted pendulum on a cart, which is uh, uh, remotely controlled uh, over TCP-like uh, lossy actuation and sensing links. Uh, particularly, the controller has uh, to uh, bring the cart position to the reference point, and it has to stabilize the pendulum in upright position. From the figure, we can see that pendulum's angle and uh, uh, cart's position in closed loop have a convergent behavior, which uh, validates our uh, result. Thank you for your attention. Hello everyone, my name is Bing Hu and I'm a system professor at Old Dominion University. The work that I present today is about how to design optimal network control system for industrial process on the state dependent markup channels. This is the work that I did with Dr. Tua Tamba from Indonesia. Let's use a simple example to motivate our research work. Consider a manufacturing setting of forklift transports raw part to a job off spot. A robotic arm is remotely controlled over a various communication channel to pick up and assemble the parts. As these two systems coexist in the same environment, the forklift's movements may block the radio signal from virus network and therefore lead to shadow fading. Although robotic arm and forklift are cooperated to achieve the overall assembly task, the individual goals may be different and conflicting. For instance, the path marked in red is a good choice for forklift because it allows shorter distance to reach the job off spot. It's however a bad path for robotic arm because it causes shadow fading around the way. On the other hand, the blue dashed path is a good choice for robotic arm but bad path for forklift. To achieve their individual goal, the robotic arm may adjust transmission power to ensure its stability, while the forklift may adjust his control strategy to achieve optimal delivery performance. In this paper, we address such conflicting interests by developing a co-design scheme that exploits the correlation between these two systems to generate optimal transmission power and control policies that ensure both stability and long-term efficiency. The co-design scheme is formulated as a constant optimization problem that minimizes joint cost for communication and control while respecting system stability. In the paper, we show that the optimization problem can be efficiently solved by a semi-definite program if a two-state Markov channel is considered. We compare our co-design approach against traditional separation design method where the communication control costs are minimized separately. As you can see from the plot, the proposed co-design approach generates the lowest cost compared to the separation design for a wide range of fading levels. In particular, the co-design method still generates very low cost even in the high fading region in which the separation method generates linearly increasing costs. These results clearly show that the co-design method leads to a more resilient system on a challenging industrial environment than the traditional separation method. Thank you for your time and please visit our interactive post session for more details about our paper. 
Good morning everyone, I am Shadish Kumar, currently working as a postdoctoral research associate, Department of Mechanical Engineering, National Chinkong University, Taiwan. Myself, Professor Enchan Liu, together worked on the topic, Resilient Memory Event Trigger Finite Time Bounded for Network Control Systems with Multiple Cyber Attacks. Problem Statement Consider the physical plant of the network control system as equation number 1, where x of t is state vector, u c of t is control input vector, w of t is disturbance input. Next, we define a fault tolerant controller, u c of t equal to c into u of t, where c is actuator fault matrix. Next, move on to the memory event trigger scheme. The condition for the memory event trigger scheme is equation number 2 and multiple cyber attacks. The attackers have the ability to jamming the signals and also release aggressive signals in a stochastic manner. The actuator signals arriving in the form as equation number 3 where g of t equal to 1 the sleeping period of the DOS jamming attack where g a of t equal to 0 the active period of the DOS jamming attack. Combining 1 and 3, the closed loop control system can be described as equation number 4. Next, we move on to the main results. In this theorem, uh, we prove that the system 4 is exponentially mean square finite time bounded subject to these constraints. Then, the following condition 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 should be satisfied and the control gain matrices are given as yj equal to kj into x1. Next, we move on to the numerical example. We consider a satellite control system model as 1 and the corresponding system parameter values are a, b and bw. By solving theorem 1, we obtain the control gain and the triggering parameter values are as k0, k2, k0, k1, k2 and w by using the system parameter values and control gain matrix values and triggering parameter values we get the sales response and control response of the memory event trigger scheme by recalling the method of event trigger scheme in one the control gain and the corresponding recurrent parameters are calculated as k and w by using these k and w and the system parameter values we obtain the state and state response and control response of the of the event trigger scheme in the work of one Compared with figure 2a and figure 1a, 1a is quickly converged to the equilibrium point which shows that our superiority of the our proposed memory event trigger scheme. Conclusion and future direction. The problem of resilient memory event trigger finite time bounded for network control system has investigated by using the Levinov function and writing a best trigger inequality. We have calculated the set of sufficient conditions in the form of LMIs. Finally, a practical example is applied to show the efficacy of the proposed theoretical results. Ongoing work. Resilient analog finite time stability for network control systems under memory event trigger scheme. Um, event trigger scheme. Thank you for your listening. Hi everyone, my name is Lisa and I will be presenting our work on Frontiers in Scalable Distributed Control, SLS, MPC, and beyond. Distributed control is important when we want to engineer solutions for large complex systems, including power grids, transport systems, process plants, and so on. These systems often require safety, scalability, efficiency, good performance, and have a number of other objectives and constraints that the engineer must fulfill. A good candidate tool to satisfy all constraints and achieve objectives is the recently proposed System Level Synthesis Framework, SLS for short. We'll demonstrate its efficacy in the following example. Consider a toy power grid subject to periodic set point changes, frequent disturbances, and saturating actuators, three common challenges in power grids. We will additionally impose that um, controllers at each node may only communicate to a local subset of controllers. For example, the orange node may only communicate to the pink nodes and no other nodes. For performance with set point changes, disturbances, and saturation, MPC is the ideal controller. However, the ideal controller scales poorly to large systems and incurs expensive online computation. We propose a different controller, an SLS-based layered controller, using an MPC-like trajectory generator and an offline controller, both of which are based on the SLS framework. This controller has synthesis complexity that scales independently of system size 
making it applicable to systems of arbitrary size. Compared to the purely online controller, it reduces online computation 20-fold, and yet it achieves performance that is nearly optimal within 3% of the ideal controller. How are we able to do this? Well, we do this using system level synthesis or SLS, which we describe both the math and the recent literature in our paper. In a nutshell, system level synthesis allows us to easily formulate communication constraints, um, enables distributed synthesis, which makes our problems scalable, and is applicable to optimal, robust, and nonlinear control, MPC, and also interfaces well with learning. Many of these tools are available in an online open source toolbox with both MATLAB and Python code. And we hope that with this work, we make the easy to use and useful SLS more accessible to the controls community. Thank you. Hello, my name is Young Jens. I'm currently a research associate at AARL. Today, I'm going to introduce to you our research, Convergence Rate Control of multi agent System. This is a joint work with Dr. Denzel Yuslin from the University of South Florida. We recognize that current distributed control methods seem to lack of information in chain infrastructure. More specifically, more algorithm only gives a single layer for information in chains, which results in fixed properties. Some papers address this problem by assuming that some information are globally known or centralized communications, where one agent can have the capability to communicate with all agents in the network. However, this is not practical for large agent team. With multiplex information networks, the limitations will be addressed. In particular, multiplex information networks utilize multiple layers for information exchange, which results in decentralized communications, global information is not required to analyze this state, and therefore, spatial and temporal property of a multi-agent system can be controlled in real time, on the fly, and in a decentralized manner with multiplex information network. We already use multiplex for controlling spatial property of a formations. The idea of multiplex is that uh, we have main layer to form the desired formations in tracking the target. And we also have several secondary layers to exchange the information on scaling factor and rotation angle. As you can see here, we have a group of five agents forming the desired formations. They also track the target and um, maintain a desired distance away from the target. Also, during the flight, the size of the formation can be changed. The main focus of this paper is to control the temporal properties of the agent system. Here we consider the main layers is a little follower algorithm with CFT is the tracking command, FRT is the convergence rate, and it is updated by the secondary layer. We note that the main layer here can be any distributed algorithm of internet. For example, if we replace it by the formation tracking algorithm like in the previous slide, then the secondary layer here can help us to control the formation to reach a waypoint in a faster or slower manner at this side. Finally, to illustrate the efficacy of the proposed algorithms, we consider a multi-agent system with five agents. For the first half, the convergence rate command is set to alpha 0 equal to 2, and for the second half, it is set to 10. As we can see here, the flux dot is the tracking command. For the first half, agents are left behind. But for the second half, they can track the target much closely. In this talk, we discuss the localized and distributed H2 control problem and its solution. My name is Jane. This is joint work with Yuxian Wang and James Anderson. The application setting here is large-scale cyber-physical systems, such as connected vehicles, the power grid, and robotic swarms. When we design controllers for these large-scale cyber-physical systems, it is desirable for the controller to localize disturbances. This means when a disturbance hits a subsystem, an ideal controller can contain the effect of the local disturbances to a local region. In general, we do not want a local disturbance to cascade to the entire network. A second requirement for control design in large-scale systems is distributed decision-making. Because the network size is often very large, each local actions should be computed using local information only. Let's look at a concrete example. Consider a linear system where the topology of the underlying dynamics is a chain. 
Each agent in the system has its own local controller and is dynamically coupled with its immediate neighbors. For the disturbance localization, we consider a localization pattern, which we denote as SL. This pattern is a binary matrix that prescribes the local region that each disturbance has to be contained in. SL is a design choice based on the topology of the dynamics. Here, we can choose SL to have the same sparsity pattern as A matrix. This means disturbances happening at agent 5 does not have any effect on agent 1 through agent 3. For local decision making, we can similarly prescribe a sparsity pattern for computing local control actions. For example, we can allow the first agent to compute its control actions based on the states and control actions of its two-hop propagation neighbors, which in this case is agent 1 through 3. Together, we can formally introduce the distributed and localized H2 problem. Here, we have a standard linear control problem with the H2 performance index and the two specific requirements for the controller to be computed. So the problem seems important and the setup looks natural. Is there any previous work on this? As we know, distributed control dates back to the 1970s or earlier, but localized control is a recent development. However, previous works on localized control all rely on finite horizon approximation and no explicit distributed implementation was given. Our latest result for the ACC is an exact solution to the infinite horizon problem. In addition, we show explicit state space controller. The result is superior performance against all previous finite horizon approximation solutions. Computationally, our controller is much cheaper to compute. In particular, our method uses closed form solution to the algebraic Riccati equation instead of running numerical optimization instances. Thank you for coming to this talk. If you're interested in more details, please check out our ACC paper. Hi there, my name is Anastasia Bizaeva. I am a fourth year PhD student in Professor Naomi Leonard's lab at Princeton, and in the next couple of minutes, I will briefly introduce you to our paper in which we study the relationship between graph structure and emergent patterns of nonlinear opinion formation. In this work, we are motivated by distributed information processing performed by natural groups, such as animals, social insects like the honeybees pictured here, and neuronal collectives. We study opinion formation in a group of communicating agents about various options, topics, or candidates, which we model as a nonlinear evidence integration process. Today we will be considering a network of homogeneous decision makers which are evaluating two options. In this framework, each agent i has a real valued opinion state xi, which is zero when the agent has no preference, positive when the agent favors option one, and negative when it favors option two. On this slide, we're looking at the opinion update rule each agent is following, the form of which is inspired by mathematical models of cognitive processing, underlying decision-making, and other complex behaviors. There are three main components in the model, a linear damping term, which tells us that an agent is reluctant to form an opinion, and in the absence of information, the agent's equilibrium opinion becomes neutral. Then on the right, we have the bias, or input term, which dominates and informs opinion formation in the absence of social interactions. And finally, in the middle, we have the social term, in which each agent saturates the information it receives from the network about its neighbor's opinions. In our paper, we study opinion formation on networks of cooperative and antagonistic agents. It turns out that when these agents are allocating a sufficiently large amount of attention to their social interactions, there are two regimes we can observe agreement and disagreement. These are rather intuitive. When agents cooperate, agreement arises, and when they compete, disagreement arises. Furthermore, we tie the emergent patterns of opinions observed in these regimes to spectral properties of the graph adjacency matrix, specifically to the eigenvectors of its largest and smallest eigenvalues. In the graphs pictured here, colors represent equilibrium opinion with red meaning that the agent favors option one, and blue meaning that it favors option two. Additionally, we show that when agents modulate their attention through a dynamic feedback law, whether or not a cascade of agreement or disagreement opinion formation spreads through the network in response to an input is related to a centrality measure, which is once again derived from the eigenvectors of the adjacency matrix. In the two plots on the right, the same input is introduced at two different nodes in the tree graph. A disagreement cascade is triggered by an input to the most central agent, and not triggered by an input to one of the outer leaves. 
My name is Shohi Kroy. Today I'll be presenting our group's work titled Distributed Control for Flocking Maneuvers via Acceleration Weighted Neighborhooding. In this work, we show the designing of distributed controllers capable of flocking and various flight maneuvers. Flocking and maneuvering are commonly observed in nature and have been modeled for robot swarms, drones, etc. for various tasks such as surveillance, herding, and foraging. Here is our dynamical model for our multi gen system where P, V, and A are the position, velocity, and acceleration of an agent. The novelty in our work is the acceleration weighted neighborhooding, or AWN. AWN explores the imbalance in agent accelerations during a turning maneuver to ensure that velocity matching with actively turning agents are prioritized. What this means is that once the turn is initiated by few agents called initiators, they will have a larger acceleration compared to the rest, which will create an imbalance causing its local neighbors to velocity align with the initiators. And gradually this propagates through the entire flock and now the entire flock is moving in a new direction. We use a distributed MPC controller to optimize our cost function to generate the optimal accelerations at every time step. Also the agents interact only by sensing the position and velocity of its local neighbors. Here is our AWN cost function. The first two terms, cohesion and separation, ensures the flocking formation and the last term, which is the velocity matching, ensures flock maneuvering. Gamma is a softmax formulation, which gives the AWN weight, which is proportional to the change in the velocity of an agent. So for the initiators making the turn, their gammas are larger, causing their neighbor to prioritize velocity aligning with them. Here are the results showing some trajectories. The first is a successful flock turning achieved using AWN. The second is captured from real life starting flocks making a turn. The last shows failure because AWN was not used and after the initiator started the turn, the flock did not follow through and you see a fragmentation. Other results include the performance comparison with 20, 30 and 40 agents for the four metrics presented here. For all the cases, the pairwise distance and velocity convergence decreases gradually as expected. The average flock velocity dips during the turn, which happens at time step 200, but they quickly recover showing high speed maneuvering. All the results here are averaged over 100 test runs. This shows the distribution of the observed turning angles. And as you can see, the observed turning angles are very close to the intended or the desired turning angle of 170 degrees. And finally, we have a simulation of the flocking maneuver with 20 agents and four initiators. In here, you can see the flocking first happens where the agents come together in a flock and then the initiators marked in black color start the initiation and the remaining agents make the turn and you can see flock maneuver has been successfully achieved. That is the end of the talk. Thank you for listening. Hi everyone, I'm happy to be here today. My name is Van Tam Ngo, a PhD candidate from National Chiang Kung University, Taiwan. My advisor is Professor Ian Chen Liu. It's clear that human is very good at handling uncertain or fuzzy problems, and multiple simple robots are perform a complicated single robot in many aspects. Thus, it is foreseeable that the collaboration of human and network robotic system is the key to enhance the flexibility and to solve tasks in remote or unknown environments. Therefore, we propose a control framework that enables a single human operator to remotely interact with multiple robot systems in the time space. Particularly, the control algorithm will ensure time space synchronization for the network robotic system. We use a nanogram equation to model the robot dynamics. As so in equation 1 for the local robot and equation 2 for the remote robots. The proposed control algorithm is addressed in equation 3, which can be divided into two main terms, tau C1 and tau C2. The tau C1 EU2 EU2 compensate for system dynamic uncertainty and also robot with external disturbance. The tau C2 Two, which is used to ensure time space synchronization. Uh, to verify the proposed control framework, we use your magic talk haptic device, at local robot, and numerical model of mobile manipulator at remote robots. The local and remote system are connected through ROS. Apply the controller 3 for each robot 
we get the result as shown in figure 3, where we can see that the end effect of mobile manipulator can form a formation and follow the local robot end effect. The checking error can be observed on the figure on the right. The contribution of this work can be summed up as First, we propose a control framework uh, for a single human operator control multi robot system remotely. Secondly, the proposed control is distributed that enhance the flexibility and scalability of the network system. Last but not the least, the proposed control can be applied for network robotic system with different kinematic, uncertain dynamic, and time communication delays. Thanks for your attention. In this work, we explore how neurons in the brain may be interacting with each other within neural circuits in order to allow for high-level functions such as completing certain tasks to occur. More specifically, in this work, we explore how nonlinear optimal control strategies could be embedded within synaptic connections in the brain. The contributions of this paper can be broken down into two key parts. First, we explore how motion control can be captured via an optimal control problem and how such a problem can be solved by means of neuronal circuit dynamics. Secondly, we identify the conditions under which the proposed solution strategy converges to a local optimum in a control theoretic sense. Our problem setup comprises of a unit point mass whose motion in a plane is steered by signal generated due to activity of an arbitrary number of neural units. The goal here is that the point mass should reach a target location in an energy efficient manner. We further posit that failure to reach this target location within a given window of time results in heavy penalization. This problem statement after a few algebraic steps boils down to the finite horizon nonlinear optimal control problem. As this is a high dimensional problem, finding a globally optimal solution is intractable. Therefore, we solve this via iterative linearization. At a high level, this iterative process corresponds to beginning with an initial guess for the optimal strategy and successively updating it until convergence. The solution algorithm can be um, interpreted as interaction between two neural populations with two different time scales, one which steers the point mass and the other which provides corrective inputs to the steering population whenever necessary. It turns out that the convergence of this strategy depends upon the nonlinear function f. When this function f is doubly differentiable, we can provide numerical guarantee that a solution will be found. Convergence of this algorithm suggests that the neurons steering the point mass will learn a strategy that completes the task in question. In the paper, we have explored two example problems. Through the first one, we have analyzed how the solution converges over iterations, as well as the quality of the solution for different random initializations of the algorithm. Through the second one, we have shown that neural strategies learned may differ based on where the target location is on the plane. We are now exploring the second problem to assess whether this is predictive of certain motor learning outcomes observed in biology.